Hi everyone! My name is Pele Renata and welcome to my YouTube channel. Inspired by the Paper Artsy topic textures, I have made six backgrounds and each of one made with somewhat similar but still very different techniques. This was a learning and experimenting process for me and if you are willing to stick around, I would like to share what I have learned. So, let's get started. I have used heavy weight, smooth watercolor paper and uh, masked the edges using a blue masking tape. Now, for the first background, I am applying the Paper Artsy Grunge paste in vertical line and then making the impressions using my, the side of my palette knife. For the second uh, background, I am applying the grunge paste more randomly than for the previous example. And this time I wanted my textures to be rough as well, but somewhat more organic. To achieve that, after applying my paste, I was pressing the white part of the palette knife into still wet grunge paste. As opposed to the rough textures of the previous two examples, this time I wanted to make more smooth textures using the grunge paste and that was achieved really easily just paying more attention while applying the paste. Sadly I didn't take great care of my grunge paste and it got a bit dry so it was a bit harder to spread it but it still worked just fine. Now background number 4, I applied a thick layer of grunge paste and used these texture cards or whatever they are called to make a vertical impressions on it. For my fifth background, I decided to use a paper napkin for making the texture. So what I did is to separate the layers of it and adhere only one thin layer using matte medium. Also while doing this, I was really trying to make as many wrinkles as possible because they are what is going to give you those lovely textures. Now for my last background, I did a very similar technique as for the previous one, meaning I adhered the thin layer of the paper napkin, with the difference that once my napkin was adhered and dried, I applied a thin smooth layer of grunge paste over it. Now you can see all six backgrounds, each made with similar techniques, but still very unique in its own way. Sometimes it is enough that you only change the way or a technique with which you apply your product and still get a very dramatically different results. I think the difference uh, between these textures will be even more visible when I start applying the paint. For these projects I will use only three colors, black, white and blue, as I was inspired by the Paper Artsy monthly topic to experiment with the shades of blue color, or more specifically the shades of Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylic Paint Surfs Up. Here you can see me trying to make my palette. First was the pure surfs up and then for each new brush stroke I am adding bit and bit more of black color or in this case Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylic uh, Little Black Dress. Here I was mostly just eyeballing the proportions of my paints but if you wish you can be a bit more methodical in this than I was. Anyway, here you can see my basic color palette, with which I'm going to work for my six backgrounds. Now I will be working with the two backgrounds at the same time, always applying the same shades, but with different techniques. So, as you can see, here I am making brush strokes only in uh, one direction for my first background. And here on occasion I was dipping my brush into the water. At this point I really wished I had a paper artsy glazing medium at hand, 
But hey, that's something I will have to change for my next project. Anyway, for the first layer of my next background, I have actually dipped my brush into the water. But for every other layer, I will use a dry brushing technique. For every next layer that I apply on both of these backgrounds, I will use more and more of the black color in the mix with my Surf's Up blue. But I won't be applying those darker shades just randomly. For the first background, as you can see, I have reached more than half of my paper with the brighter shades. But with each darker shade, I will make uh, shorter strokes, meaning they will reach uh, less and less uh, surface of the paper. Something similar goes for the next background, meaning that uh, with each darker shade, I was staying more towards the edge of my paper. While doing this, let me remind you that the full list of supplies that I have used in this project can be found in the description box down below, but also in my blog post on the Paper Artsy blog. There you can also find how my Paper Artsy teammates have explored texture, but also colors in their own way. Anyway, hopefully you can notice how I am slowly trying to reach really dark shades and how I left enough space that brighter shades can be noticed as well. <laughs> but of course, at this point, this just looks so much like a mess. But trust me, it really does get better when I add some white color and even more when I peel off this blue masking tape. Now I am switching on to my next two backgrounds and for them I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I have decided to start going first from the darker shades and then slowly build up to brighter shades. But to spice it up even more, I decided to use different techniques for applying the paint. For the lower background I am applying the paint with my palette knife while very often using tapping motion to make really fun and interesting texture. It is very discreet, but later I will emphasize it using a white acrylic paint. But for the upper background, I am just uh, brushing the paint over the texture. Now, last two backgrounds. This time I will again make a difference by applying the paint with a different technique, meaning for one uh, background I will apply the paint with the palette knife, while for the other brush. Here again I went back to applying first uh, brighter then darker shades. I don't know why I kind of find this approach a bit easier, but both techniques are really fun in its own way. And, of course, you will get some more different results. While playing with these uh, different uh, background textures, it was fun to notice what uh, different results you can get using exactly the same paints, but also how different is applying the paint with a palette knife, with a wet wipe, with a sponge or a brush. And even though I made uh, six experiments, I feel like I have only scratched the surface of these various techniques in texture making. Now, one last thing that was left for me to do was to add some highlights. And for that I have used uh, two different techniques. One was using a sanding block. The point is to hold it as horizontally as possible. And that way you will remove the paint only from the most uh, textured areas while the other technique was to add some uh, white paint. I have used a Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylic called Snowflake and on a couple of backgrounds I have used palette knife to apply it while to others a brush or even making just some splatters. I think adding white color was a really important step as I felt like it brings those textures to life. 
And be honest with you, some of these techniques and uh, results I like better than the others. I have ideas what I would change if I would do it next time. But it was honestly just a learning curve for me. Anyway, now time for the results. This is the background for which I did the deep uh, vertical impressions in the grunge paste, but also those tapping motions with the palette knife while coloring the background. This was uh, the one where I applied the grunge paste rather roughly and painted the background going from darker to brighter shades. Now the background where I applied my grunge paste smoothly going from brighter to darker shades with a dry brushing technique. Now the background where I made the impression with the side of my palette knife into the grunge paste while coloring the page in a single direction. This is where I adhered only the napkin and applied the paint using the palette knife. And the last background is the combination of the napkin and the grunge paste. And if you're curious which technique I like the best and which one I have used for my paper artsy blog post, check out my next video. Bye!